There have been intentional disinformation campaigns that have been perpetuated through the media, which have led a lot of people to perceive kind of false things about this or make people skeptical about potentially getting involved in Bitcoin. Okay, I'm gonna put on my Bitcoin skeptic hat. Let's go through some of people's biggest concerns and all the myths out there. Starting with, I don't trust Bitcoin because no one knows who created it. The inventor of Bitcoin is a pseudonymous individual by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, but no one knows who he or she or maybe they are. So Satoshi made the brilliant decision of never being known by his name. Uh, Satoshi is a pseudonym. It's a, it's a fake name. And so I think Satoshi understood if you fundamentally undermine money and government's control over money, they're not going to be very happy about that. So if you are the public face or image of Bitcoin, you are become a weak point where governments could attack you individually in the hopes that that might undermine Bitcoin. And so Satoshi removed himself from that sort of visibility. If we put a face to the money, it changes our perception over it versus it being this neutral, apolitical thing where um, a money shouldn't have anyone who's a central leader behind it. You know, Bitcoin's whole entire purpose is that it's decentralized. And so Satoshi was not only pseudonymous, but then he eventually removed himself from the project. And I think that was an important step in, in Bitcoin becoming decentralized and removing political attack vectors. Whereas other assets like, you know, Ethereum have a central leader. But what happens if Vitalik gets arrested? Or, you know, heaven forbid something bad happens to him. He's a weak point in uh, the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, Satoshi, I think, understood very fundamentally what Bitcoin was about, and it's about challenging the state's control over money and giving people the freedom uh, to have their own money. And when you do something like that, you're going to have a target on your back. Okay, so it's neutral money. Sounds too good to be true. Won't governments around the world ban Bitcoin? For the U.S. government to ban Bitcoin is fairly unthinkable. I don't know how that would actually practically be achieved, given that it is uh, acknowledged to be a commodity, is decentralized. I don't think that there are actually intentions to do that. There are many regulators who are actually open to those benefits, as well as policymakers uh, on the Hill and otherwise. The biggest threat really is what the US government decides. But as we know, the U.S. government is treating Bitcoin in a way that it, it looks at it as something that's viable. If one government does that, tries to grab your Bitcoin or take it away or make it illegal, another government will pop up and say, well, Bitcoin's legal here. So these governments who try to take it from people do it at their own peril. So Bitcoin is uh, distributed digital money wrapped in military-grade encryption optimized for survivability. So it's designed to withstand a nation state level attack. So that is the greatest threat, but it's also the threat Bitcoin is purpose built for. There's an important court case known as Bernstein versus the Department of Justice, where a university professor wanted to publish cryptography software or encryption software that he created. Now, the government through federal regulations require that that software be submitted to them. And Bernstein thought this was against his First Amendment rights. So he actually filed a lawsuit against the government and ended up ultimately winning that lawsuit where it was decided that software programming or language is protected as speech under the First Amendment of the Constitution. This is important with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is cryptography software. So you would think that it's also protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution. So maybe they won't outright ban it, but there is a big concern Bitcoin could somehow be shut down. Bitcoin cannot be destroyed, uh, mainly because it's constructed in a very unique way. Unless you were able to destroy every single computer in the world that had the code of Bitcoin on their computer, it can't be destroyed. Unless you were able to go and shut down every single machine that was running uh, the mining software and was actually securing the network, you can't shut down or destroy the network itself. And then ultimately, unless you're able to go and, and remove the private keys from every single person in the world that holds it, you can't destroy the individual Bitcoins themselves either. And so given this open source software, this decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system, and, and the fact that it's been constructed over a decade and a half, it now has reached a level where could it be 
hurt? Could it be slowed down? Sure, but it cannot be destroyed because ultimately all you need is you just need the code to be on one computer somewhere in the world running and you have Bitcoin. Okay, but a lot of people think Bitcoin is ruining the environment because it uses way too much energy. So let's explore that. The percentage of renewables operating in the Bitcoin network for mining is, is actually shockingly high. Most power that's used for Bitcoin mining is green energy, it's renewable energy, it's waste energy, and so it's actually not adding to the carbon footprint of the planet. According to the Bitcoin Mining Council, which makes up over half of the global Bitcoin mining network, approximately 58% of Bitcoin mining operations utilize green and renewable energy. This means that Bitcoin mining has the highest renewable fuel mix makeup of any other industry in the world. And the great thing about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin mining is instantaneous and it's mobile. So you can chase cheap energy. The most successful Bitcoin miners are those who find the cheapest energy, and the cheapest energy is the energy that does the least damage to the environment. Bitcoin mining, proof of work mining, is leading the transition to renewables. So for those who care about a transition to clean and green energy sources, they really should be embracing Bitcoin mining because this is how we are going to get there. It uses so much, it uses as much energy as these small countries. Okay, you mean different than the banking industry? How I many branches do you drive by on your way home to work? Have you ever been into bank? Why do we have these big buildings being heated and cooled and people sitting around doing nothing? We all use our ATM cards, we wire money to each other. So there's a lot of electricity that's used in a lot of things. Gold mining uses six times the amount of electricity as Bitcoin. Everything we do, all of us, every day, is take energy and convert it to value. Bitcoin to me actually is the perfect conversion of energy to value. You ever seen the picture of the United States at night? It's totally black except for North Dakota and West Texas. Why? Because they're flaring gas, right? They produce oil and there's some gas that comes out. They don't have any pipelines, so they literally put it up in the air and they light it on fire. Really bad for the environment, you know, cool light show but that's a negative. So what could we do? We could take that gas, we could attach a micro turbine to it, and we could turn electricity into Bitcoin. We could attach a miner to it. Now, we don't need a pipeline to send that value. All we need is an internet connection. We don't need to get right of ways. We don't need to kill any birds with windmills and wind farms. And that is a perfect conversion of energy to value. It's actually a net positive for the environment for taking the carbon out from the flared gas. That's a huge positive, but no one talks about that. Because the incumbents don't want, the banks don't want this migration to a better form of money. Bitcoin mining can go anywhere. It can go anywhere on the planet that there's an internet connection, which is virtually anywhere because we have satellites that provide internet connections and it can plop down on top of a landfill. It can plop down on top of a dairy farm. It can plop down on top of a, waste, a wastewater treatment facility, and it can take that methane and it can combust it because methane is a flammable gas and it can generate electricity with that methane and turn it into CO2. And anytime that you're doing this, you're having a very positive impact on the environment because methane as a greenhouse gas is 84 times worse than carbon dioxide over a 20 year period and 27 times worse over a 100 year period. So now you've actually created something of value while you're cleaning up the environment. And in my opinion, Bitcoin mining is going to become, or in my opinion already is, one of the most powerful tools for cleaning up the environment that we've ever discovered. But wait, isn't Bitcoin used by bad guys? As some criminals keep finding out, the last thing you would wanna do if you were trying to steal a bunch of money is put a public ledger out there that follows every move that you make uh, until you have an exit. In the early days of Bitcoin, a lot of nefarious activity was happening there because they were quick to adopt this new technology. And now, uh, if, if you're you know, a criminal, you, you really don't use Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. From people who are in the intelligence industry who, who are willing to talk openly about Bitcoin, they actually prefer when criminals use Bitcoin because they can actually track them down using some special methods. It is private, but it's not totally private. However, the reality is that the percentage of financial crime within crypto is very, very low. And that's for a number of reasons. It is easier to investigate fraud and financial crime in cryptocurrency than in the traditional financial system. 
And that's really because of the native properties of blockchains. Every transaction appears on the ledger and it's traceable. People think Bitcoin's anonymous, it's not. Um, it's pseudo anonymous. And you hear stories all the time about bad guys kind of getting caught using blockchain surveillance. It is possible to track people down. In 2016, there was a hack against an exchange, the Bitfinex uh, exchange, where $70 million of Bitcoin was stolen. Well, over the next six years, the launderers attempt to move those funds uh, to obfuscate transactions. They used obfuscation techniques like mixing services and darknet markets and anonymity enhanced coins and really every laundering technique in the book. Well, you know, five years later, six years later, uh, IRS criminal investigations was actually able to seize back those funds and arrest two individuals in New York City. And when the seizure actually took place, you know, five or six years later, those funds that were 70 million at the time were now worth about 4.2 billion, making it the largest seizure of anything in US history. That is an only in cryptocurrency story. That case does not happen in traditional currencies. What's so extraordinary is it's not just the government that can trace cryptocurrency transactions, it is everybody. Some people have heard of Bitcoin being stolen. So does that mean Bitcoin can be hacked? Can't be hacked. Bitcoin cannot be hacked. Yes, for someone who's sort of new to crypto, um, Bitcoin really sits in its own vector because its primary focus is security. You know, protecting the ledger, using proof of work, and making it expensive to try to create fraudulent entries. Back in 2014, there was an exchange based in Japan. It was the largest Bitcoin custodian at the time. And in 2014, this exchange was hacked by a Russian hacker. So it is true that exchanges can have cybersecurity vulnerabilities, and an intruder could actually infiltrate that to steal Bitcoin. But Bitcoin itself, the software, cannot be hacked. It actually can't be stopped. You know, you, you think about Bitcoin as almost like a, a bank on the corner of Maine and Maine. And instead of like every now and then, like some bank robber wants to come in to uh, rob the bank, Bitcoin has thousands of bank robbers around it every single second of every day looking for a vulnerability to attack and, and pillage. And so it, it, it is uh, at a much higher rate of uh, security and uh, confidence now that it's been around for over a decade. And people say, well, but don't you get hacked? Well, turns out the banks are getting hacked all the time, every day. I was hacked, I had to move banks, I had to change my phone number, I had to change everything. But that was through a bank. No one to date, knock on wood, has ever hacked the Bitcoin blockchain. 